And now we're gonna talk to Norb Baggy about the fourth annual Pinto Stampede uh, in Michigan. How are you, um, Norm? I'm doing good. How are you doing today? How are you? Excellent. Thank you. So, really cool event. Huh? Uh, tell us a, a little bit about it. The fourth edition already. Yeah, this is the fourth edition of the Pinto Stampede. We started off wanting to do one of them, but uh, everybody had such a great time and they wanted to keep doing it. And we made good friends, and uh, we just decided to keep it going. Wow. Well, so yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about the history. How did this start initially? Like a uh, like a small group, and then it kept growing. Uh, uh, how, how did that happen? Well, the first thing I saw a TV show was uh, Mustangs Across America, which was about a caravan of uh, you know like three four hundred Mustangs that were driving in this uh, this big tour of the country. And I said it'd be great to do that with Pintos, but you know there's not a lot of Pintos out there. Yeah. So it's not like uh, you know a Mustang or a Camaro where if I want to put a car show up on the corner, fifty will show up. So we had to plan it, and the first one actually took two and a half years to plan. Wow. Uh, and and I wanted to do a cross country drive, which ended up being from Denver, Colorado to Carlisle, PA for the Ford Nationals, which was in co coincided with the 40th anniversary of the Ford Pinto. So that's that's how we got started. And uh, so I, I guess you, you had a Ford Pinto from the beginning, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, uh, I'm, I'm one of the younger guys in the group. Um, my parents had Mustangs, and then when they got divorced, you know, there's not so much money to go around, they ended up in Pintos. So <laughs> I kind of grew up in the back seat of a Pinto, so for me it was a nostalgia thing, well, and it's, it's pretty much a nostalgia thing for everybody, you know, most of the guys that I drive with, you know, that was either their first car or the car they had in college, so so for everybody it's all about nostalgia. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool, because, I mean, again, there's like, as you mentioned, some other cars like Mustangs and Camaras and other things that people are... I mean, they're more popular, so obviously you have more people following them, but Four Pintos, you don't hear that much about it. So the first one you said it was a, a cross-country uh, drive, so what uh, what happened the next few years? Well, the next year we did a drive uh, down south, and then uh, last year we did a run down the Mississippi River. So, you know, each year we try to pick a different area, and this year we're going to uh, Dearborn, Michigan is where we're going to meet. This is the first year where it's not going to be, you know, three days of solid driving. Um, we've been invited to the Ford Employee Car Show, which is very uh, prestigious event for you know Ford people because it's mostly a lot of one-offs and and, and 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 classic cars that are really unique uh, or prototypes. And they generally don't invite a lot of car clubs, but they invited us, so we're we're honored to be there. And, sure. and that's going to be on Friday. And then on Saturday, we're going to drive to Hell, Michigan. So we're, we kind of made a little joke out of it that the Pintos are going to Hell and back. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So how big is going to be the group? How many cars do you have uh, signed up? I have 45 signed up right now. Oh, that's pretty so good. That's, that's, and, and there's actually a few that are going to be coming from the Ford employee end. So we're probably going to have close to 50 Pintos. Oh, okay. And uh, can you tell us a little bit of the history of the car? I mean, uh, maybe uh, some of our audience don't, uh, I mean, know the name, but know, don't know much about the car itself. Well, the Ford Pinto uh, started in 1971. It ran to 1980. It had a 10-year run. They sold uh, 3.2 million Pintos in that time. Uh, it took the Mustang almost 25 years to reach that, that number of sales. So that'll tell you how many they sold in a relatively short amount of time. It was a very big seller for Ford. Um, one of the things that it's known for, which which we don't really like, was uh, there was a newspaper magazine and a television uh, news uh, broadcast that, that did a big thing on that if you hit the car in the back that it would explode. Um, and they actually said that thousands a, thousands a year died in Pinto related fires. But, uh, you know, a few years later, the, the real numbers came out, which uh, in 1976, when there were two and a half million of these cars on the road, only 27 fatalities were reported in Pintos. Uh, and that's total, including, you know, if you drove off a, a mountain or something. So yeah. it was a big exaggeration to say thousands of people a year died, but that's not anything we can change. It's what the car is known for. And, uh, you know, we know it's not true, but uh, it, it's still, it's, it's one of the things that people say when they come up. But overall, people come up and so many of these cars were sold They generally come up and, and are happy because it was a car that they remember. Their girlfriend had one, their neighbor had one, they had one, you know, they were everywhere. Yeah, and I actually kind of uh, remember uh, that the stories about those uh, accidents and all that uh, because they were mentioned again, like I think in the early 90s or 90s, 
there was the incident with the Explorer, I think it was, with the tires or something like that. And so they always right. bring back those kind of things. And also interesting because in the previous segment on this show, we had a, some, uh, an interview about reputations. And back in those days, there wasn't any internet and all that, like the stories uh, will clarify faster. And I guess this is one of the examples of that, right? A great car that got a bad reputation for one little, in well, not little incident. There were like accidents, but I mean, it's a shame that that happened, no? You know, it's, it's kind of funny because when you look at the car, all the cars were designed inherently the same at the time. The gas tank was between the bumper and the rear axle. And that was pretty much a crush zone for the gas tank. Um, but when you look at the Pinto, the, the Pinto had a side nozzle gas tank, which at the time, most of the cars had a rear nozzle, which was even yeah. apparently more, da more dangerous. You know, the Mustang, the Camaro, the Gremlin, different cars all had that rear fill. And when you hit that car and it sprayed the gas, it sprayed it right on the engine and it could really ignite, which is why they don't do that design anymore. They kind of, everybody does the side fill now. But the thing with the Pinto was, uh, you know, it's, it's just what it's known for. I mean, every decade has a car that, the media went after, whether it was the Corvair or the Pinto. More recently, they went after the Prius. Uh, you know, it just, it's just kind of what happens. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, hopefully um, no more accidents or anything like that. So, like, uh, a lot of fun uh, at the event. So, tell us a little bit about your particular car, or, or maybe you have more than one. Uh, I have uh, three Pintos, or I had three Pintos. I sold one last year. Uh, my, my Pinto that I drive has actually a Boss 302 motor in it. Um, and uh, it's, it drinks a lot of gas. It goes real <laughs> fast, and it's really loud. Uh, my wife, she has one that has air conditioning. So there's, there's so many different varieties of the car. Mine is not the factory model, of course. They built, built them with four-cylinder and six-cylinder motors. But, uh, you know, they had station wagons. They had cruising wagons, which were kind of like the old custom vans of the 70s. Yeah, I remember those, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they had the hatchback, the coupe model. I mean, we, we have all big variety of cars coming with us there's so many different styles i mean you could have the squire wagon which has like the woody paneling on the side with orange shag carpet and orange plaid seats some people will look at that car and go it's ugly i look at that car i think it's beautiful <laughs> Excellent. yeah so we're talking with uh norma Baji and we're talking about the the four pinto stampede uh that is gonna take place in uh michigan uh and again, is there a web page or something that where people can uh, look for more information about your club and like maybe other activities in the future? Yeah, there's uh, www.pintostampede.com and you can also follow us on Facebook. We have uh, Pinto Stampede on Facebook. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, have fun and uh, please uh, share all the, the, the pictures and yeah. I'm sure like uh, pretty cool videos of this uh, event this coming weekend. Thank you very much. Thanks for giving us the time. Esto ha sido todo la edición de esta semana. Los espero muy pronto aquí en Cristina Radio Network. Yo soy Javier Mota y esto es Alto 060. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting. 